Greetings and salutations. I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood. Thanks for joining me for another Tip Tuesday. Last week, we took a look at the advantages of using raw files versus JPEG images when it comes to white balancing your photos. Today, we're going to take a look at the improved sharpening inside of Lightroom 3 and Adobe Camera Raw 6. Let's go ahead and jump in. You can see on the screen that I'm inside of Lightroom's develop module and before I sharpen this photo, I want to point out a warning in the lower right hand corner. It says that I should update to the current process 2010. Now it's worth noting that in Lightroom 3 and Adobe Camera Raw 6, they vastly improved the image processing technology. This is referred to as process version 2010. If you've made edits to images in prior versions of Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw, those will be referred to as process version 2003. The thing that I want you to understand and put in front of you today is I don't believe you should run out and immediately update your entire catalog to the 2010 process version. If you've made prior edits, you might experience unexpected results. So let me show you what I mean. If I take this image, I want to show you in the camera calibration panel, it is an old image with the process version 2003, and I'm going to switch to the detail panel to apply some sharpening. So that you can see the sharpening, I'll zoom in on the image, and I'm going to exaggerate the sharpening by taking the amount to 150. So clearly this is very heavy handed, but that's okay. Let's assume that this is the sharpening that I want to the image. Everything is groovy, really like it. I've now decided to update this image in my catalog. So I go and change the process version to 2010. Clearly the sharpening is distinctly different. I'm going to change to a split preview of the before and after image. I'll do this by pressing Y on the keyboard. If you're not seeing a split down the middle preview, you can simply press Shift Y. Notice that the image on your left is the 2003 process version, while the image on the right is the 2010. It's worth noting that you're going to change the way you sharpen photos. You will not use the same values you've used in the past. In fact, I've discovered that you'll use smaller values. You're not going to sharpen as heavy handed as you did in the past because the sharpening inside of Lightroom has improved that much. So draw your attention to the screen and I'll show you here. I'll switch to my detail panel and watch what happens when I back the sharpening off. It doesn't have to be that heavy handed and clearly you can still see there's a distinct difference but now you can see how superior the process version 2010 is to the image on your right. So this is something that you want to keep in mind. You're going to see a dramatic difference in your files if you update them, if you've applied sharpening and other effects, but that also means you'll have to go back and tweak those images. So if you don't want to make any further edits to a file, I say leave it the 2003 process version. But if you want to experiment and see how much further you can take that creative process, by all means go and update the image. Now let's take a further look at how you sharpen photos inside of Lightroom 3. I'm going to get out of the split preview by pressing Y to turn it off. I'm going to reset this photo and this time before I go and sharpen it, I will change the process version first. So I'm going to switch this to 2010. Now this is the 2010 process version. I'll go to the detail panel. Now I'll begin sharpening the photo. To sharpen the photo, you have amount, radius, detail, and masking. Understand that amount and radius control the level of sharpening across the photo and how it's distributed across the image. The detail and the masking are ways of leveling off or buffering the amount of sharpening that's happening in the image. So if you want to scale it back, you use detail and masking. If I go to adjust the amount, if I hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC, I can see that this is luminosity sharpening and I can see how it's being applied. As this is the improved Lightroom 3, I don't have to sharpen as heavy. Then I can take my attention and focus on the radius. Now the radius, again, I'll hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. 
and this shows me the areas that will be affected by the sharpening. So if I take the radius and really point it up, I'm going to focus more on the edge details in the eyes and the eyelashes. And of course, if I back it off, you can see that those edge details in the eye and the eyelashes are not affected as heavy. So I'm just going to bump up the radius a little bit. Right, right here around 1, 1 1.2 is good. And now I'll focus on the detail. The detail is how you uh, account for uh, sharpening halos or image halos. So if I take the detail and buff it really low, okay, it's really going to back off the sharpening a lot. Notice if I pump the detail all the way up to 100, it lets all the sharpening come through. And that's much more detail than I really need. So I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to use a small amount and really just try and get it off of the skin pores. Last, I have the mask. Again, I can hold the Option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC. And when you do this, you can see that the sharpening is applied to the entire image. This is because, as they say, white reveals and black conceals. So white is revealing the areas that will be sharpened. Black is going to conceal them. So as I slide the masking fader to the right, you can see the areas that go black, the sharpening is going to be ignored. So currently, I'm doing sharpening on the pores of the skin. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to continue to slide the fader to the right, and this is going to back the masking off. So I'm just going to keep going until I just am not sharpening the skin pores. I just want to sharpen the eye and the edge detail. Once I have that, I'll let go of the Option key, and you can see this is the sharpening before, and this is the sharpening after. So notice how it grabs the eyes, okay, and there it's off. So this has been sharpening inside of Lightroom 3. Let me flip over to Adobe Camera Raw so you can see how you'd make the changes there. So I'm going to flip over to Bridge. And here I have that same image. Oh wait, I need to write off the preview. Let me do that real quick. All right, so from Lightroom, I'm just going to go to my photo menu and just update my DNG preview and metadata real quick. Now I can flip over to Bridge, so we'll see the changes there. And if I simply right click, I can open this in Camera Raw. And I just want to show you very quickly where you'll find those settings. So first, this is the image and it is again the updated process version. So this is the 2010 process version. And this would be controlled by the details camera calibration panel. So in the camera calibration panel, this is where I can change the process version. So notice if I go to 2003, it gives me the warning in the lower right hand corner, tells me to update to the current process. So I can flip that over to 2010. And if I wanted to edit the details, I can go to my detail panel to control the sharpening. So I have the exact same faders. I can control the amount of sharpening. Here it is really heavy. You can see that's way, way too much. Notice all of the texture around the eyes. So I can definitely back that off. I can use the same shortcut keys. Option key on the Mac, Alt key on the PC, and you can see exactly where that sharpening is going to be applied. So once again, I have an amount, radius, detail, and masking. The exact same settings that I used inside of Lightroom because we have that nice parity between Lightroom 3 and Adobe Camera Raw 6. So I'm going to go ahead and just cancel out of this. Those are our changes for today. Once again, I appreciate you being here for this week's Tip Tuesday episode. As always, join me next week where we'll be talking more Lightroom and Photoshop. And please, as always, subscribe to this YouTube channel. My name is AJ Wood. Thanks for being here.